Hello and welcome to Cult Classic Society, the podcast where I, Bobby Davis, and my friend Tim Martini. Hi. We go through the films, the video games, the music, the television, the comic books. You love it, we love it too. We're going to have a little chat about it today. First though, Tim, how are you? I'm doing good. Wait, we're allowed to do comic books now? If you want to do comic books, we can do oh, comic we, books. We can do comic books, great. I, I have more to add to the list, but I am doing great. So... Anything, anything entertainment and pop culture? That's, that is a fair point, but yeah, I am doing great because it is a week away from download and I'm so fucking pumped. Well, who, who are you looking forward to? Well, Slipknot is going to be the final act of the whole festival. Headliners. Headliners. We've got Metallica headlining twice. Fair enough. Uh, we... Did someone pull out or was that always planned? No, that was the plan. Uh, yeah. They're doing two unique sets because it's going to be four nights. So on Thursday and Saturday. Oh, wow. we got Brimmy Hood the Horizon on the Friday night. Um, well, you enjoy them. Actually, I, yeah, <laughs> I'm 50-50 on them, but Skin Dreads literally just got announced last week, which I was so pumped for. They're replacing Five Finger Death Punch. Really? Yeah, uh, the band man got ill, so oh, that's shame. Sad. And two days from now, I'm seeing Ice Nine Kills live. Your favourites? Yes, and they're going to be at download. <laughs> nice. So yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a really good good weekend. I'm so super pumped for it. Good, good. I'm glad. Glad you've got a... A nice thing to be looking Cut forward to. Cut to the next that. recording <laughs> session of me. has got I'm so dead. <laughs> well, speaking of music, I asked you to listen to some music last time. By doing my favourite band of all time, Blink-182. Yes, yes I did. <laughs> Tim, what... And this is just like a silly question, because I feel like anyone in the alternative sphere knows something of Blink-182. Tim, what did you know about Blink-182 before <laughs> I asked you to do this? I, I discuss, we discussed this very briefly in the last episode. All I knew was two things. All the small things, and that Travis Barker was a drummer. <laughs> That's all I know. These are both... Well, one's a fact, one is a song title. Well done. Which is also a fact, because <laughs> they made it. <laughs> I'm going to warn you, these may be my most extensive notes I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> the main lineup of Blink-182 are Mark Hoppus, Tom DeLonge and Travis Barker. Band is always a trio. There have been a couple of other iterations, but we'll talk about that. Uh, originally formed in 1992 by Mark Hoppers, Tom DeLong, and the original drummer, Scott Rayner. Uh, they had a couple of other names before Blink. They were Duct Tape and Figure Eight. Although they weren't Blink-182, they were just Blink. They met because Tom got expelled from his high school for drinking. <laughs> got put into another high school, which is where he met Mark Hoppers' sister, Anne, who introduced them, as they both love punk music. There is a nice book about their history called Tales from Beneath Your Mum. Uh, their first proper release was 1994. Uh, it was called Buddha. They did do a demo before that called Fly Swatter, but they wouldn't consider it a proper release, so we won't either. They recorded their first proper album in 95 called Cheshire Cat. It took them three days to record. Wow. Which is now, you know, that seems insane to record a whole album in three days. In 95, after they released Cheshire Cat originally, they had to change their name from Blink to... Well, they had to change their name because an Irish band called Blink were threatening to sue them. <laughs> And they <laughs> they took two weeks saying, oh yeah, we'll do it soon. And the record company, like two weeks later, were like, have you got another name? And they were like, put 182 at the end. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't even mean anything. It's just a random number at the end of their original, one, one of their original names. They released an album called Dude Ranch in 1997, which has a song we'll talk about later, but it's become one of their biggest hits. And this is all still pre-Travis Barker. Oh, okay. And that went gold in 98. It's around this time Scott was fired from the band, Scott Rayner, the original drummer, for excessive drinking, which he was kind of doing to, according to sources, self-medicate for personal issues. At the time, they were touring with a superhero-themed ska punk band <laughs> called the Aquabats, who all do dress up in oh, wow. a superhero uniform. Travis Barker was their drummer. He learnt their entire 20-song set in 40, 45 minutes Jesus to cover Christ. for Scott. Uh, he joined Blink permanently later that year. They recorded their first demo with Travis, which is a demo for their next album called Edinburgh of the State. They were took it to their record label, and the guy who ran the record label, or the guy they were meeting with, said, yeah, be prepared to play arenas, this is brilliant. And all it took was, uh, if you jump between the two albums, there is a bit of a growth musically for Tom and Travis, yeah. but, no, sorry, for Tom and Mark, but Travis's drum style, just something completely fresh and new for that kind of music, made it sound completely different to anything else that was out there. Edinburgh of the State was fully released properly 
in 99, huge commercial success, has your song that you knew. <laughs> All the Small Things was on that one. Only one. Uh, as well as two other big singles, Adam's Song and What's My Age Again. What? Massive commercial success. Put them on the map. And then in 2001, they released Take A Few Pants and Jacket. Mm. Kind of a refined version of that enema sound, the enema of the state sound they created. And that's the first thing I asked you to look at. Yes. So, first of all, what do you think of the title of the album? Take Your Pants and Jacket? Yeah. Uh, I had to make sure I was listening to it and I was like looking at it. Even though it's like it's Blink and probably <laughs> very iconic, it's alternative music to not... Most people in the mainstream don't know about it, so I kind of had to like hide <laughs> my phone. It's a bit of a... Um... It's a double entendre. Yeah. Because if you look at the artwork, there's a plane for takeoff. Yeah. There is trousers, pants, and there's a coat for jacket. Yeah. But they're not saying that, really. I know. (laughs) They're saying you can jack off. So we'll go straight in with it, then. First song on the album, Anthem Part 2. Is there a part one? No. (laughs) No, there is. Of course there is. It's at the end of uh, Edinburgh of the State. Ah, fair. (laughs) I was going to say, the first thing that got me was... The, the, the um, intro, it has a system of a down vibe. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. Like, kind of, that, that kind of guitar riff. It reminded me of their song Toxicity. I was going to say, yeah. Toxicity. Yeah, I can see I can see where you're coming from. I'm not sure what came first, actually. Around the same time. Around, I think Toxicity came out in 2003. Yeah, so this is two years before that. Yeah. yeah. But I see what you mean. That kind of, that area of the guitar, that notage. Yeah. That rhythm. Oh, yeah. I know, You know what, I... Never put two and two together until you said that, but I can I can see exactly where you're coming from. I've been listening to a lot of System of a Down recently. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you have psyching yourself up for your metal festival. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, then so this is Mark singing, right? Uh, no, it's mostly Tom. Oh, it's Tom. Tom is the one with the iconic Blink One Eighty Two voice. Oh, the higher... yeah, the high voice. So yeah, that's yeah. it. So yeah, this is Tom singing. I just love the whiny tone that punk music has. So <laughs> <laughs> Tom. The thing you can do with Tom is the bit in uh, another big famous Blink song, I Miss You. Yeah. The the voice inside my head, yeah. that's Tom. Where are you? Yeah, that's yeah. him. That's him. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk more about that once we get to life, sh- life oh, set. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah, he pills out that Tom the long, doesn't yeah. he? <laughs> There's a very kind of Blink staple here in this song, which is for the first half of the first verse, it's just bass and drums. Yes. And it happens... Fairly regularly in their songs, actually. Even if Tom's not singing. Yeah. So sometimes if you watch him live, he's just kind of standing there, <laughs> normally dancing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was he able to bring up in the live set? Because he just look, in the live set, just jump forward, just a bit. When there's most, it's just bass solo. He's just there, like dancing, moving his arms up and down. Looks like he's just taking a bunch of acid. Oh yeah, he Tom just <laughs> likes to have fun. Tom's a Tom's a wacky dude. <laughs> Obviously, this song's about being young. Yeah. About being. They were. I mean. They met in 92, and that was when they were in kind of middle school, slash yeah. low, lower high school. So they're obviously in their 20s by this point. But, yes. you know, yeah, it's an anthem for the kids. Like I say, with the strike, you can, I could already tell why Travis has like a massive like following, why everyone was like... Because you brought it up in the Slim episode, where mm-hmm. it's a big debate between Joey and Travis. Yeah, when I was at school, for sure. So hearing this, like, I understand it. <laughs> and you know what? It's not even... This isn't even him going at his full pelt. There's stuff... And he, he didn't really show it in the Coachella set that I asked you to watch either. But I'll maybe send you some clips of him kind of 2003, 2004 when they were touring the self-titled album. They created like new middle sections for songs that already had middle sections and Travis goes, fucking man. <laughs> There's a bass interlude in this one. Yes. But the drop after that bass interlude, I love it. When Travis hits, it seems like he's hitting like eight drums at a time, but he's so big. Like the do, 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 do. He's so awesome. impressive. He's awesome. Do you want to know, have you seen his drum kit? How, how many pieces it is? Yeah, it's insane. No middle tom. I know. He's got a floor tom and a small tom, bass drum, a snare drum, a hi-hat and a couple of cymbals. The most basic drum kit you can have. But and just... he does have a cowbell. I'll, I'll say oh, that. yes. <laughs> More cowbell. Oh. <laughs> it just shows like, his creativity. They can do so much with basically so little. Well, this was always the argument when I said about uh, being at school and people are arguing who's better, Joey or Travis. It's like... Okay, Joey's amazing, but he has like a 400 piece drum kit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Travis does the like amazing things on like a, f- a four piece drum kit, which is insane. But Joey did play a whole set upside down. Travis has been spun upside down as well. <laughs> Just to put it out there, he has been. <laughs> uh, on the tour for this album, he got lifted. There was a sign behind them on fire that just said fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the drums spun upside down. And he was going Jesus. round and round, yeah. 
I don't know why sometimes I just get vibes of him. You know the Simpsons episode where it's Spinal Tap and there's a drummer? Yes. And he's doing like the drums that of the devil's deflating on him. <laughs> yeah. That's somehow just how I imagine Travis sometimes. Yeah, he would go for that, yeah. They have featured in The Simpsons. Yes, they have. In, in the Tony the, Hawk episode. In the 300th episode special. Yes. And uh, I haven't even got this in my notes, but again, I don't fucking blink, I know it. So the episode, Bart gets himself emancipated, leaves the family. Emancipated? <laughs> don't you want to be a dude? <laughs> And he goes in there, lives in a flat, and he finds out that Tony Hawk lives above and has parties. And has hired Blink-182 to play. <laughs> My favourite thing is like, hey, Blink-182 can play. We have names, you know. <laughs> My favourite bit is, <laughs> I think it's, Travis says, let's trash this place. And Mark says, after we, we get, get paid. paid. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really good. We moved to the second song. It's called Online Songs. So this was the moment I realised they have two singers. <laughs> Yes. Because I never knew. So this opens with Mark singing. Yeah. yeah. So both both bassists, so three piece, bass and guitar, Tom yeah. playing guitar, Mark playing bass, both sing. Travis, you very rarely hear his voice on anything. <laughs> He's not a big talker. I mean, they reference Sandy Coachella set. They do, yeah. Josie, the name they use in this, which is literally the first word in the song is Josie. They've actually got another song called Josie. Is that uh, before or after this? It's before this. It's on Dude Ranch. And it's again about a girlfriend called Josie. A line I like in this. Is when they go, even though they, even though they know you weren't the only one, two, three, four. Like they use yeah. accounting at the end of the sentence, which I quite like. It's, it's clever. And Tom, this isn't something he like. This is the kind of thing he Tom would normally just do live. But there's a bit where you could just hear Tom screaming the word shit. <laughs> <laughs> Very like skate punk drumming again, a bass and drum half court, yeah. half verse again before the guitar kicks in. Again, I was, I was writing this like I love it that they give the bass time to shine because. Yeah. The bass is always like an underappreciated instrument, I find, because it and normally just blends into the background, especially with like larger bands who probably mm-hmm. have like two two guitarists. They have a bass underneath, and then the bass is normally just blending in with the drums. Yeah, what I think they do well is building up. Yeah. So you start with fewer instruments, so you've got somewhere to go. Yeah. You add and add and add, and I think that always works, and especially with a band with two vocalists. You can always add dual air vocals and stuff, which, which they, do. they don't get massively into on this album. They do a couple of times. Yeah. But as they're on the following one after this and the one after that, there's a quite a lot of dual air vocals, which, yeah, allows you to build from like two instruments to three instruments to an instrument or three instruments and a voice, two voices. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty nice way of building things. And again, like as we said, with like Travis doing so much with so little, it's just three people. It's just three of them. Yeah, man. Live, there some of the sometimes you will hear two guitars. Yeah. Tom does record them both himself, and then they'll have live. They normally have someone off stage, yeah, playing the other guitar. Fair enough, because um, Tom obviously can't do both bits at the same time. Pretty, I ch- I that is pretty. Too. That is pretty standard for a band. <laughs> yeah, who, yeah uh, exactly. Dual, dual it's like with White Stripes. Like there's only two of them, so sometimes they need to have like instruments like piped in or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This isn't uh, so. All the small things isn't the only uh, blink song with loads of Nas. I wrote that. I wrote that too. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, they love to use that, don't they? You know what? It's weird. They don't use it loads. I think maybe three times. Yeah. But yeah, because obviously all the small things is their biggest single ever. They, they uh, people uh, associate the na 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 nas with them. Or hey Jude. Yes. <laughs> Slightly different rhythm, but yeah. <laughs> Third track on this album is first, first date, which I wrote in all caps. I know this song. Now I was gonna say this might be the first one on this one that you know. Have you seen the video for it? No. The video so, for this is fucking great. I know I asked you about this the later song, but was this song played at your wedding? I think they just played the rock show. So okay. I had a pop punk band at my wedding, obviously, covering all sorts. They did I they did two blink songs. Yeah. They definitely did What's My Age Again at the end. Yeah. But they also did I'm sure they did Rock Show. I feel like it was the Rock Show, but the thing is I know first day. It's the, been on movies, it's been that's probably on television. What it is. Because it's probably been played in a bar that you've been in, yeah. like that. It's because I'll I'll say this because I had that as a later note, but I'll say it now. This somehow made me very nostalgic. This whole album made me very nostalgic. <laughs> it I, is twenty two years old. <laughs> twenty two years old, but even then, I was three. <laughs> but a baby. Do you know what? Do you know what kind of? Obviously, there's a ten year age gap between us. What makes me really depressed about you saying you were three is that I got this on the day it came out <laughs> <laughs> as a 13-year-old. I, I probably even know what CD was. I went to... So I live in a, I lived in a town where there was a Woolworths. Do you remember Woolworths, too? I remember Woolworths. <laughs> <laughs> I literally went before school. The Woolworths opened... I can't remember what time. Opened well before school, though. 
went, I had my Walkman on me, picked up the CD, got straight on the bus to school, and I was the first person out of my friendship group to have it on me that first day it came out at school. Nice. Yeah, I can... See, I miss buying CDs. <laughs> like, I, 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 there's some bands I will order CDs for, like mm. Slipknot, because I have already have most of the albums on CD, so every time a new one comes out, I'll buy it. But you just order it online now. I miss like having to go to HMV or whatever and buy it. There are certain bands that I have gone and bought the back catalogue for on vinyl. Oh, nice. That I love. And when they release a new one, I'll buy the vinyl. Um, but there's only like, cause it's kind of like 10 bands. And that's fair. I think when I ever get space, I do want to like start a massive vinyl collection. I don't know how often he listens to this, but my friend Chris has got a massive massive vinyl he's a big record collector he's got some really cool stuff <laughs> we were at my friend another friend's house a third friend matt he's got a little record collection just whatever matt used to work in a record store years ago picked up a few limited edition things that didn't really think much of he has a signed bullet for my valentine album that chris reliably informed him is worth like a grand and he was like oh really <laughs> <laughs> he had no idea <laughs> yeah first date very big single uh first in terms of sorry in terms of track listing this is the first one on the track list that has, was released as a single. Oh, okay. Had a really cool music video set in the 70s where they all had characters that they played. Tom had a big mustache and he was called Boomer and he was basically a sex pest. That was the <laughs> <laughs> that was his thing. This, I think, is... Although you said Travis already shows what he could do, this is the first track where I think Travis really shows what he can I, do. I wrote that as well. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, he carried, a, so he carried a different vibe on this song. I feel like the um, guitars, ri- guitar and bass riffs have been almost the same for each song. Not yeah. just a complaint because it's great. So do we do do good? But Travis, he just wants something completely different to this. Mm. Our, my jaw is dropping every time I heard it. Like wow, yeah, those feels that don't feel like they should fit in that space. Yeah. and the kind of the timing of the the, the staccato bits. The da da da. It's just yeah, it's real cool. Uh, the chorus goes big and like the, the some of the speed. I actually found myself singing along to it towards the end. Well, that that end bit where they repeat the last line of the chorus. Yeah, is one of the. They don't often uh, they, at this point do fade outs. Later they do more, but at this point where they're the let's make this last forever mm-hmm. and ever and it just goes on and on yeah, until yeah. it fades down. That's actually quite again. This with this being a big single, that's actually quite an iconic bit. Is it? Yeah. Like, then let's make this last forever exactly. and ever. And it's, yeah, it's it's very well. Kind of in the pop punk community, there was always a who made who made a bigger impact. Was it Blink One Eighty Two or was it Green Day? <laughs> did Green Day only make the impact they did because Blink stopped when they did originally? Yeah, like it's yeah, it's there. So not to make another Simpsons, <laughs> Simpsons reference, but when he said "and never and never," I just think, no way, man, they keep rocking forever and, and ever <laughs> and ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's a later episode, but that's still a good reference. That's a great one, Homer Palooza. Yeah, it is good. That is good. The next track, track four, Happy Holidays, You Bastard. I really have four notes for this. Go on then. What? What? <laughs> what? Love the chaos. Yeah, it's fucking great. This shows that kind of skate punk sense of humour that they never yeah. drop. They're still doing it now, and they're pushing yeah. fifty. And you know, it really reminds me like being a little skate kid watching. Viva La Bam and Jackass listening to Blink-182 it all kind of comes together yeah. to create like a vibe that doesn't really exist so much anymore which is a shame in some ways and obviously a lot of it's very pure uh, yeah. but it had its time and it had its place and I do get nostalgic for it if I watch Jackass and stuff I mean like Jackass had its like swan song last year with yeah. um, Jackass Forever yeah which was very fun it was really great so, for those who don't know, I co-run a professional wrestling company <laughs> called Purpose Wrestling. Last year, we were going to do a Christmas show. We ended up cancelling it for a multitude of reasons. The original title I wanted to call that show, because we named them all after songs, was Happy Holidays, You Bastard. And friend of the podcast, David Francisco, vetoed me. Did he listen to the song and then go, no? No, just the word bastard in the title, I think. But I changed oh, it for no. another Blink one because they do have another Christmas song oh. called I Won't Be Home for Christmas. <laughs> so I went with that. So, some epic lines in this one. We haven't actually covered many lyrics. Have you had any like, nice lyrics you like? I'll be honest. I couldn't note down any lyrics. Not because there was like, none that stuck out to me. I was just enjoying it. So- I was just enjoying the moment so much. Well, let's go over some lyrics from this song. 
<laughs> there's an opening bit. Uh, it says, I'll never talk to you again unless your dad will suck me off. I'll never talk to you again unless your mum will touch my cock. I'll never talk to you again ejaculate into a sock. <laughs> I'll never talk to you again. <laughs> this is their... This is the kind of thing they they do. It's their kind of dumb sense of humour. They're literally the epitome of like early 2000s skate dorks. And I fucking love them for it. It feels very American Pie. Well, they were in American Pie. Were they? The very first American Pie. The bit where... I can't remember the character's name, but Jason... Um, the oh, lead guy. Yeah, no. He sets up a camera in his house. Because he's going to film himself having sex with a foreign exchange girl, right? Remember yeah. that bit? There's a band practicing, and then they stop to watch the video because some guy calls them over. And Mark, it's Blink-182, yeah. Mark has got a monkey on his shoulder <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> and the guy showing them it on the computer goes, I know that guy, he's from my trig class. And when it cuts back to them, Mark going, go trig boy, it's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> they are massive dorks. So Tim, I want to introduce something new to the podcast. Oh. And it's at this point, I think it might be the most appropriate for this this time round. I'm going to do a little quiz. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, happy holidays, you bastard. You listen to it. Fucking ridiculous lyrics, right? So, my quiz for you is, ridiculous lyrics, was this Blink-182 or was it someone else? What, do you mean who wrote it? Or? So, I'm no, I'm going to oh, okay, give sure, you sure. some lyrics. Sure, You're going to sure. tell me if you think it was Blink or if you think it was someone else. Cool. And if you think it was someone else, I, I want you to have a punt. Sure. I'm, that's going to be quite hard for you to guess. But just, I'll we'll give try. you a point if you say it's someone else and it is someone else. Cool. Yeah. Do I get a bonus point if I say who it yeah. is? Yeah. There are 12 questions. Oh. But you can get more than 12 points yes. if you get the yes, bonus yes, points. Yes. Right? First one. And of course I'd do anything for her. I'd search the moons of Endor. I'd even walk naked through the deserts of Tatooine. Princess Leia, where are you tonight? And who's laying there by your side? <laughs> Oh, is that Blink? That is Blink. Yes, that is uh, the song's called "A New Hope." <laughs> it's an early one, pre-Travis. Okay, great song. Next one, my love life was getting so bland. There's only so many ways I can make love with my hand. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that just sounds like a Tom line. Is it? Is it Blink? It is Blink. <laughs> it's called Eminem, is that song? Another early one. Uh, uh, next one. Driving so fast, about to piss on myself. <laughs> That's not Blink. It is not. For an extra bonus point, who is it? Is it in the punk world? No. Okay. Driving so fast, about to piss on myself. It's not Lonely Island, is it? No. Uh, who is it's it? It's Miley Cyrus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what song was that? It's called 4x4, apparently. Oh, okay. I don't know some of these songs, but I uh, just googled funny song lyrics fair, to, fair to fit in. <laughs> Christmas came a night early because a guy named Bubba unwrapped my package. <laughs> it's that blink. It is. Uh, it's about him going mad on Christmas at Carol is and getting sent to prison, and so, then so that's the other, that's the other Christmas song. <laughs> that is. That's I went me home for Christmas. Uh, sucking too hard on your lollipop, or love's gonna get you down. Right, because that sounds like a Steel Panther lyric, but it's not. No, it's not Steel Panther. No. Is it Blink? No. Who is it? It's Mika. <laughs> Mika? Yeah. So, so far, you have got one, two, three, four points out of a possible five, not including bonus points. You're doing pretty well. Wow, yeah. How can I explain why mummy's not here anymore? Because daddy likes porno and $10 whores. Daddy gets wasted and robs liquor stores. That's not Blink. No. It's not Blink. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, I feel like I know that. That... <laughs> I want to say Eminem. <laughs> no. That is Stephen Lynch, singing comedian. <laughs> no bonus point, but you know, you're five, yeah. out, five out of six. That's pretty good going. As long as um, I get halfway, I'm fine. <laughs> I want to fuck a dog in the arse. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's both yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> is it arse or ass? It's ass. Blink. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> off the off the track, fuck a dog. <laughs> uh, I want to see some naked dudes. That's why I built this pool. I'm going to say no. It is Blink-182. Oh, shit. That is called Built This Pool. And it's uh, off the album California, which is later, a later album. Oh, okay. So you are... Where are we now? You are, I think that is 
six out of seven? Wait, hang on, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of eight you've got. Not bad. I've got four more three. to get it to the 12. Only one wrong. That's pretty good going. Two wrong. No, you didn't get the bonuses. Oh, yeah. You sure only got one wrong. Oh, that's oh, fair. Oh, no, you got two wrong. You're yeah. all right. Sorry, you've got six out of eight. Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm putting... No, that is half points, which yeah. is what you're aiming yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. Your skin is so smooth, I couldn't afford you with hair. You have all the holes real girls do, plus one for the air. That's not Blink. No. I don't know who it's sang at. That's Tim Minchin. Uh, fair. <laughs> It's that about, it's about a mannequin. It's about an inflatable textile. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd love to mention. <laughs> That's seven out of nine. Okay, here we go. There we're going. Just about done with your butt. I'll let you know. <laughs> That's blink. Yeah, it is. Uh, when you fucked Grandpa, did he tell you that he loved you? <laughs> <laughs> is that blink? Yes, yeah, it is. Final one. It's Mother's Day, and I'll be fucking and sucking and touching. That sounds like Blink again. It is. Not bad. Okay. Two wrong. <laughs> Ten. Yes. Ten out of twelve. No bonus points though, so you let yourself down a little bit. Uh, but I, no, got, no, to, I got to double digits. <laughs> Ten out of twelve. I'm impressed, Tim. Well done. You've um, you've kind of honed in on their sense of humour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You found it. You found it. It's juvenile, but it's straight to the point. Oh yeah, yeah. They they, they don't fuck around. <laughs> Back to take a few pants of jacket. The next track is Story of a Lonely Guy. This is probably the most unique song on the album in terms of just its vibe. Yeah, it's a bit slower, a bit um, a bit more serious yes. at this point for their kind of the stuff they usually do. Massively underrated track, in my opinion. I really it liked it. It was only an album track. Yeah. But I fucking... I love it. And in fact, there's an analogy on here that they don't often use, especially at this point. He, he, he compares like his life to driving. He's like, uh, made my entrance, avoided hazards, checked my engine, I still fell behind, or I fell behind. Which is, you know, they don't they don't often do analogies, but I think they've nailed that one. Yeah, I think they did a really good job of it. They do da da instead of na na. Yeah, <laughs> they do indeed. Again, it's about being like a, an awkward teenager, and I was a very awkward teenager. <laughs> this really kind of uh, spoke to me at the time. Yeah, I mean, I was an awkward teenager too. You're still I... basically an awkward teenager too. <laughs> <laughs> Look, just because my Twinkie frame, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I think it's the, there's a the nice end to the chorus line, so read my book with a boring ending, a short story of a lonely guy. I think this is um, in Enema. Uh, sorry, Blink fan shorthand for Enema of the State. Just call it Enema. Fair. Which is weird to people who don't know what you're fucking talking <laughs> about. Just saying the word Enema out of, no, out of context. Just dropping it. Um, there was a song called Adam Song on yes. there, which is about a fan of theirs who healed himself called Adam. And this, in a lot of respects, feels like a, uh, a sibling to that song. Not quite a follow-up because it's not really about someone killing themselves. Yeah. But it's got that same vibe. It's got the same feel of it in terms of tone. Yeah. Anything else on the story of a lonely guy? No, I just really liked it. I liked how it it, it sticks out when you listen to the album in a good way. Yeah, for sure. It's a nice point, the kind of five songs in to have a, a different vibe. Yeah, because it's like half, like about halfway through. Just just before halfway through. Yeah. yeah. The Rock Show. Now you definitely know this one. Everyone knows this song. Yeah, and again, like I I, I had to message you going. Yeah. Did they play this at your wedding? <laughs> Yeah, they did. I'm sure they did. I'd actually have to go. You you recorded it. It's probably on the footage you got somewhere. Oh yeah, probably. Um, although, kind of halfway through the band, I was like, yeah, just come and join in, Tim. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, to be fair, it's like ten o'clock at that point. It's yeah, like, yeah, you're done filming. Yeah, stop filming. Come here. Another great music video for this one. They took their budget. They they recorded. They played in front of a crowd just for the the playing scene. Yeah. Then for the other bits, so the you know, you do a story or whatever you can do in a music video. They took their budget and went very jackass with it. Just started paying people to do shit. They paid like a, a lady to shave her hair. They wow. took a homeless dude, got him a fresh haircut, um, a fresh suit. They were giving people, uh, skateboarders, money to try and jump their van. Like... <laughs> Fair. Yeah, it's just a fun video. Very of the time as well with jackass being as popular as it was yeah. and stuff. The first thing I wrote was, Warp Tour shout out. Yes. So yeah, they'd already been on the Warp Tour by this point. I think they they went to had they gone to Australia with the Warp Tour at this point. I think they had. Yeah. Before I think it was even before Enema, they went to Australia a few times. Wow. Um, Australia was like the first out of US market they broke because uh, apparently uh, pop punk was massive in Australia before it was massive out anywhere else outside of America. 
I can weirdly see that. Yeah, well, surfers, skaters, yeah, you know, exactly. similar vibe. It really, this con kind of encapsulates that exact kind of, for me, it's nostalgic because it makes me feel like I'm in my late teens, early 20s again. Yeah. It's that, especially if, because I picture the video sometimes when I'm listening to it and stuff, it just, is this one for me is like the most nostalgic. You said, for some reason, first date made you feel nostalgic. This yeah. song makes me feel nostalgic for sure. I mean, since I listened to the album, this one has already become like my most listened to song. Really? Yeah. How many times have you listened to it? I've already lost count. Really? I can't believe you you never really got into them before. I suppose because of your age, they they broke it up when you... They first broke up when you were to be about seven. Yeah. And I think I, I discussed it like at the, begin, like the end of the last episode. It was... My thing was... Everyone said, you got to listen to Blink. you got to listen to Blink. you got to listen to Blink. So there's such high expectations <laughs> yeah. for it. So, uh, so it sounds like they're delivering so far. Um, oh, no, they are. Absolutely. But, you know, most of the time when people say that, they're wrong. So... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like... The bit where they're telling the girlfriend's mum that they're going to move to Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> and they're only 17, which I find it's quite funny. Nice layered vocals, especially for the towards the end. Uh, they've got like the this... nice harmony in the middle of the black and white pictures yeah. on, uh, on my, of her on my wall. It was at this moment I, I noted that like, they're just both incredible singers and they both bring something so fresh and unique, which makes each song feel fresh and unique. I don't, yeah, this is the thing. Technically speaking, they're not very good singers, but they know what they can do well. They bring that kind of California skate boy yeah. vibe to everything they do. Even the more serious stuff, it's there. Because that is their... That's their speaking voice. Yeah. Like, Tom does sound like that when he talks. You hear it later in the Coachella. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. And, yeah, they definitely bring... It's why Tom DeLong's voice is often imitated. But not just when people are singing Blink. Yeah. When they're singing anything when pop they're singing, punk. Yeah, they're singing pop punk. But they people will just do a Tom DeLong impression. <laughs> Even if that singer sounds nothing like him, yeah, it's it's just so ingrained in people for pop. I do it when I make fun of Simple Plan. I mean, his his voice isn't dissimilar, but it's not as up there as Tom's. Yeah, yeah. That's the first thing that when I go to imitate... probably closer to Mark's, to be honest. Yeah, but when I imitate them, I imitate Tom DeLonge's voice. Yeah, stay together for the kids. This Another the first time where they were like both singing on the same track, like there was like. Tom was singing in the verses and Mark was singing in the chorus. It's the first full split, I think. Yes. So Rock Show, the chorus is half and half. Yeah. It's Fairly in Love is one. Yeah. And then the other one is With a Girl at the Rock Show. Oh, she yeah. said what? Told her that. Yeah. And, uh, but this was like where it's more... Like... It jumps between them. Yeah. yeah. But this is a full split. Yeah, yeah this that's is I mean. verse and chorus. Yes. Tom wrote it. Uh, it's from the perspective of a kid whose parents are breaking up. Yes. And Tom wrote about his parents breaking up when he was a kid. Oh. <laughs> Uh, again, another. It's, there's, a, there's a handful of songs that are in the, the vein of Adam's song, which was the first one, and this is another one, I think. Uh, they had to record two videos for this. Two. The first one showed it was like a literal interpretation. So, um, a house being knocked down by a wrecking ball. Ah. Uh. Uh, then 9 11 happened. So, they didn't really want to show the structure of a building as part of a video. So, instead of continuing to knock the house down, they. Well, they'd already done the video, but they the wreckage of the half left up house was still there, and they just went and filmed like a moody video around the broken house. Fair enough. Um, yeah, it's, the both videos are good. They have released the other oh, one. Oh yeah, I was gonna yeah. ask. You can you can go find the other. There's two versions of it. Yeah, now. yeah. There's a really heartbreaking line: is that I see them every day. We get along, so why can't they? And it's like if you think about that as from the perspective of a kid. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, mate, right in the fields. No, no it's <laughs> tragic. <laughs> The drop back into the middle section of this song with the drums yeah. just before the guitar hits. Oh, fuck me. And I just love it. And then some, I think they go on to do better in the next album. There's a song called Down on the self-titled album. And they do a similar back from a drop back into a drop again. Okay. And I think they hit it harder. I was, I was going to say they do it in the Coachella set. Down. Yes, yeah. they do do Down in the Coachella set, yes. And... Uh, the end with the piano is very pretty. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, lots of piano in it. Yeah, Tom did the piano as well. So oh, he nice. can, he, he's not good at piano, but he can play a little bit of piano. So any, especially simple piano, piano lines you hear are more than likely going to be Tom. Yeah. He can play what is needed. Yes, yes. Same with guitar, really. He's not the best guitarist. <laughs> he, he He's a good writer, but technically speaking, his guitar skills are okay. And you said, and they're, and they're this big band, so it works. Yeah, man. Well, simple melodies with big drums... And catchy lyrics just is their formula, and it fucking works. Yeah. Next song, Roller Coaster, another massively, massively underrated song. 
Uh, it was only a sing- uh, only an album track again. I fucking love this song. Okay, this is where I noticed that like no song was going over four minutes. <laughs> Most don't go over three. <laughs> okay, it's just short and sweet. Yeah, yeah, to the point. They are they after this album they do play with the formula a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, this album is kind of intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, middle section, chorus, maybe double chorus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and most songs do follow that formula on this. The next album, not so much. Oh, fair the next enough. album becomes very experimental, comparatively speaking. I mean, that's fair. I feel like if you hit your, like, your strides with everything you want to do, you might have to start playing around with it more. Yeah, for sure. See what you can do, and then obviously fans will like it fans will not but yeah very I'll talk speak about it after we've done this but very mixed reception for the self-titled album people now most people who didn't like it first it did grow on them yeah there's a handful of tracks that will drag you in um feeling this big single I miss you big single there's a song called always which is somewhere between this and the new stuff that I think helped the transition okay Travis's drums here were like almost hip-hop style almost funk style not very punky at all on this track. Yeah. Uh, the drums in the middle section are fucking awesome. I could say the song feels like very teenage angst, but not cringy. Yeah, I mean, so it's about dating again. Yeah. I mean, the line, uh, I had that dream about you again, where you drive my car right off the fucking cliff. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very angsty. It's about, he's clearly dating with someone who's a bit mental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great song. I, mean, I don't really got much else to say about it. It's Neither really massively underrated. Great, but simple main riff. Just a good song. Reckless Abandon, the next song, is a song that wasn't played very much early on when it was released, and it became part of their set when they first got back together in 2011 or so. Yeah. Uh, before that. And it hasn't really been dropped from the set since, which is funny, because it was an album track. Yeah. And now it's like a, a staple, especially if they get to play a long set, like, you know, 40 minutes plus. Yeah, yeah. It tends to appear... I was gonna say I love the like tape scratch effect that they have in the opening of it. Yeah, the kind of radio effect yeah. vocals and the scratch. Yeah, super simple, but kind of the drop after that just smashes oh, it. That's great. Yeah, I was gonna say this song makes me want to wear a backwards uh, baseball cap backwards, <laughs> like Tom, like Tom does. Yeah, like Tom, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a yeah, it's about fucking. It's literally called Reckless Abandon. It's about skate kids being nuts, essentially. I was gonna say the music gives me the vibe of Wild's Fucks, but let's party. Yeah, kind of. It's it's kind of when they say reckless abandon, it literally means throwing kind of caution to the wind. Yeah, because I would say like that was always like a big. I think we touched on it slightly in the slow episode, but that's obviously the difference between metal and pop punk. Like with metal, it's like, well, it's fucked. Let's get fucking angry about yeah. it. But metal, it's like, well, it's fucked. But you guess let's have fun. Yeah, they dare. They dare. It, pop punk is about fun. Yeah, skateboarding and beer and pizza normally. Yeah, the uh, there was a memes a while ago like. Pop on kids. I like pizza and I hate my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> In the middle, there's just a list of crimes they reel off. <laughs> it's great. The bit that um, really encapsulates that skate punk thing is a lyric. There's a lyric, um, make in front of your friend's mum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Memory that's full of fun. Uh, fucked up when it's all done. Yeah. It's just the battle about, like you said. Uh, every time I look for you, another... A banging album track that I think deserved way more than it got. I was got. gonna say the transition from Reckless Abandon into Every Time I Look for You was fucking sick. Yeah, just the uh, the float through between yeah. the two is, is so nicely done. Well, like two, especially at this point, I'd say the next album they really thought about the transitions between songs. Yeah, this feels like the first time on this album they thought about the transition between the two songs. Another bass and drum only half verse before the guitar kicks in. So good. <laughs> the drums on this track are amazing. Just, I mean, you can say it on every track. That's the thing yeah. about Travis. <laughs> Call and response vocal, um, which they don't do a lot. Yeah. Even later on, the kind of back and forth, back and forth rock show they do it. I've already got. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of it for that. Yeah, I mean, same. It's just another good album track. Uh, give me one good reason. It's kind of um, it's kind of about school and and college. This this has got a really fucking great line in it well, that I don't know if you spotted. Heavy metalers with their awful pussy hair bands. <laughs> wow. wow. Say they the, fucking went for it. I know. <laughs> Let's say the opening just reminds me of like stereotypical punk vocals. Yeah. I think it's, cause it was Tom on the vocals, right? Tom does most of this. Yeah. Know, all of it. Maybe. So it yeah. was just that, as we said earlier, like Tom on just like the um, stereotypical voice of punk now. So every time he was just doing that, I was just like every like TikTok I've seen, I was just making fun of punk. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, this. 
Uh, this is another one Tom wrote because it's about him getting expelled from school. It's about his his experience uh, towards school and yeah. thinking about going to college and stuff and just yeah. And again, another ridiculous fucking drum feel that I don't even understand what Travis is doing. Uh, epic, epic middle section on this one. If you go back and listen to it, a lot of it is just quite simple guitar and bass. And yeah. the thing that makes it epic is the drums. That's, <laughs> that's what I was going to bring up, actually. I feel like, because cause it's just one guitar and one, and one bass and then drum and if there's so, like, there's not much, like, crowding in no. there, so it gives the drums room to breathe. Everything the bass. Everything comes through cleanly. Yeah. Like, obviously, we did an episode on Street Light Manifesto. One of my other, again, they're, they're in my top five favourite bands, for sure. But there are points in tracks where there's eight instruments playing. Yeah. And if you, you wouldn't, without looking for it, you wouldn't focus, say, on the bass. Yeah. Whereas this, it's all clear. Like you said, three layers. You can hear it all the time. Yeah, because like, I say the same as Silent Lord. That's nine people in a band. Yeah. You cannot tell me there was a bass in there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you once you get to grips with a song and love it, you can go back and just go, there's the bass. I can hear yeah, what he's yeah. doing. Yeah. But you don't need that in this. It's just there. It's on They're like, no, we're going to give you bass. <laughs> the next song's called Shut Up, which has one of the greatest opening lines of any song ever. It just starts with, shut the fuck up, she said. <laughs> I'm going fucking deaf. You're always too loud. <laughs> Uh, another bass and drum half verse before the guitar kicks in. Uh, this is one I just wrote. Yeah, Travis is an amazing drummer. <laughs> He's unreal, isn't he? Uh, especially with, like, again, with that size of kit is something special about being on such a basic, basic ass drum yeah. kit and being able to smash the shit out. Like, make it, it makes it sound like he's got a 20 piece kit. It's, it's insane. Because I think we'll, we'll mention it when we talk about the Coachella set, but. You just see like the speed that his arms move when he plays, and it's not even just about speed. It's about he's an amazing drummer to watch. Yeah, because he's his arms flail to almost full extension into the air as well. So how the fuck he gets his arm back down to drum that fast is beyond me. He's given himself like a carpal tunnel syndrome yeah. and stuff, <laughs> which uh, explains a lot. So Sharp is obviously about a breakup. Uh, I don't think there's any particular one. In... No, I was going to say this was the one that made me get nostalgic. <laughs> For the 2000s. Yeah, it's, it's very of the time, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Hits that marker. One thing, that this is where I'd, I'd never really considered it before. Blink, they don't really do solo solos. Even no. when Mark jokes around and says it's a bass solo, it's more of an interlude that's led by the bass than yeah, it is exactly. a solo. And it doesn't matter because most of the middle sections just fucking slap. Like, rather than having a solo, you just have a middle section with a breakdown and it's just yeah awesome. I like the line in this. I'll never ask permission from you. Fuck off, I'm not listening to you. <laughs> Which is just like, okay, yeah, there's an argument for you. Last, lo- well, okay. Last track on the regular version of the album yes. is Please Take Me Home. And this one's about hooking up with a friend, which is not one they've done before. Mostly it's either about breaking up or getting together with a girl. Yeah. This one is about a specific girl. Uh, I mean, they're always about a girl, but, you know. <laughs> uh, about you, in particular. Yeah, great end to an album comes off big. I was going to say, out of all the albums we reviewed, even the ones I've picked, this might be my favourite final track. It, yeah, it's a really good because way to end, right? one thing that we spoke about with Iowa, and I would argue with Ice Nine Kills and uh, Street Light Manifesto, they overindulge mm-hmm. on final tracks. It's like a go big, go home kind of thing. Yeah, They're like, no, we're just going to have fun and just do what we've been doing. Mm-hmm. And it just fits that vibe so well. Yeah, and it it feels like an end as well, although yeah. it's in a similar vein. It's like it's called "Please Take Me Home," and yeah. you know, taking it home in music is going to the end. So you know, there is maybe they maybe they thought that, maybe they didn't. It does feel like the end of an album. Yeah. However, when they released it, there were three different editions. Oh. There was a red one, a yellow one, and a green one. The main rare UK one, I believe, if I remember rightly, was the red one, which is called "Take Off," and it had the picture of. So the disc, the only thing that was different was the disc, and obviously had the different track, the last oh, okay. two tracks were different on the back. Uh, it had the red disc with a plane on it, and it had two more songs. There's one called Time to Break Up, which is an absolute fucking, bang. I don't even think it's on Spotify, I haven't even looked. It's but not. But Travis has got a ridiculous drum feel in it. Like, of all the ones I've said so far, I had a mate who was a drummer when we were teenagers, and he would genuinely studied that feel. I think he wrote about the feel, just one drum feel in part of his GCSE for music. Fair. Fucking amazing. And then, I listen to this on Spotify and it ends with Please Take Me Home. Yeah, so I listen to it, read to it on Spotify as well. I do have 
I bought all three versions. I like on eBay bought all three versions of this album on CD when I was younger. Wow. To have the tracks like officially. Fair enough. <laughs> the track after that is called Mother's Day, which is one of the ones I said in the quiz earlier. <laughs> Each of these has a serious track and a joke track as Fair. an end. Uh, the yellow version is called the pants version. It has a picture of trousers on it. Uh, that's got a track called What Went Wrong. Another one that I think could have replaced Please Take Me Home as an end track. It's, again, about a breakup. All three of the serious tracks fit in so well. Yeah. You could have made this as like a 16-track album with those three, and I don't think anyone would have complained. I don't know why they specifically went for, I think it's 12 tracks. Or 13. Yeah, 12. Uh, 15-track album. <laughs> the yellow pants version on joke song was called Fuck a Dog. <laughs> Uh, and then the green jacket version has a song called Don't Tell Me That It's Over which is really fast paced really skate punk yeah. but it tonally fits massively well in with this album again super fast drums again super fast bass <laughs> and then the joke track was When You Fucked Grandpa <laughs> uh, <laughs> go out and uh, find that for yourself kids <laughs> So that's it. That is Take Off Your Pants with the special uh, toy patch, if you will, yeah. the abbreviation. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of it. Barker, after this album, Barker and DeLong did a bit of a side project. Uh, Tom had written some quite quite emo-ish songs. Yeah. Not like heavy emo, like you would know, like My Chemical Romance or something like that, but more kind of lighter, softer. Yeah. And he did a side project called Boxcar Racer with Travis oh, okay. on drums and a couple of different guitarists. Had um, Tim Armstrong from Rancid appear on a track. A couple of other guests throughout. One album, one off. It was done. Yeah. I think they toured once. Did one short American yeah. tour. I don't think they came over here to the UK. But, yeah, it was it was what it was. A little bit of a side project so Tom could get some of that emo stuff that he'd written. <laughs> get there. off his chest. Yeah. In 2003, they released a critically acclaimed self-titled album. Yeah. This is the one that has the famous logo. The smiley face with the arrows. Really? Yes. Not to 2003. Wow. The one that I have tattooed on my shoulder. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> with the pink and green kind of uh, paint dashes and stuff. This is the one with Feeling This and I Miss You. Big tracks. I Miss You. Feeling This was very big in the alternative scene. People loved it. But I Miss You did quite well commercially. Yeah. I mean, excuse the term, but the Chav kids, when I was younger, even knew what it was and quite liked it. Wow. <laughs> it's, quite, it's a bit of a softer jam. You probably know it. Um, I'm sure you must do. Where are you? <laughs> exactly, yeah. There was actually a boy at my school. Uh, I was in sick form when it came out first year. Was I? No, I wasn't, but we listened to it in the sick form common room. I was in my final year of school. No, I wasn't. I was year 10. Um, but we, I remember listening to it in the sick form, sick form common room. And a boy was like, I really like this song. Except that one line. I was like, what line? And he's like, oh, the spiders catching things and eating their insides. It's like, <laughs> well, I mean, they've done pretty well to hook you then. <laughs> if, if one line really upsets you that much. It was at this point, touring became hectic. And DeLong decided he wanted to, a lighter schedule and wanted to spend more time with his family. So he stepped out from Blink. And the band was officially, uh, the press release was said they were on indefinite hiatus. Yeah. In the meantime, Travis and Mark formed Plus 44. Okay. Who, uh, they did one album. Really good album. The reason they called it Plus 44 is because they were touring the UK when Tom told them he was leaving. Oh. And Mark is an Anglophile. Lived in London for about five or six years. Yeah. Uh, during between this break, he lived in London. Supported Chelsea, though, which I can't, because he moved to Chelsea. <laughs> I, can't, I can't abide that. But they did an album called When Your Heart Stops Beating. Self-titled, uh, the t- title track, When Your Heart Stops Beating, is a fucking banger. Absolutely great song. The Long formed Angels and Airways, most of which he recorded at home. He got Atom Willard from, was he in The Offspring? On yes. drums. Uh, one of the guitarists from, or the other guitarist from Box Car Racer. They did four albums, I think. Wow. And they toured a little bit, not as the hectic schedule Blink did. They also produced a film. <laughs> Film. Yeah. The group as a threesome didn't talk again until 2008. Wow. So three years. That's, that's, uh, three years is quite a long time, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Mark and Travis were obviously still buddies. Still yeah. took, they, I saw Plus 44 twice. They toured over here twice. Twice. In their wow. short existence. So they, they were kind of like really mad at Tom for leaving. Well, Tom kind of removed himself. Yeah. They, there was some friction because they were talking about and had laid down some ideas for a new another album. Yeah. And then Tom fucked off. So there was definitely some friction. 
they started talking again in 2008 when Travis was in a plane crash. Oh. With his friend DJM, Adam Goldstein. Oh, yeah. They survived. It was a private plane. Adam and Travis both survived. Yeah. All, there were six people aboard. The other four all died. Jesus. Travis got second and third degree burns. Yeah. And developed PTSD. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. This prompted DeLong to get in touch, though. Yeah. Tom reached out, come and visited Travis in the hospital. Yeah. Uh, and when Travis told Mark Tom was coming, Mark decided to come too. Yeah. And it was apparently like two hours of laughing and joking and being friends again. And then Tom was like, so are we going to do this? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> they released, in 2011, I think it was, they released Neighbourhoods. Yeah. Uh Recorded apart from each other because Tom still wanted to spend time with his family. Tom has a home studio in LA. Oh, amazing. No, not in LA. In San Diego. Mark and Travis both live in LA. Yeah. Um, they just, there's a studio near them both that they drove to and worked their bits together. Yeah. They toured it. Travis traveling worldwide by boat. Yeah, I, I was going to ask, like, so he obviously still travels worldwide. How did he manage that? So he goes by boat. Um, they had a secondary drummer. Yeah. So if for some reason, like, you know, a boat from the States to the U- Europe takes like six days or something. Yeah, yeah. If there was a date that he couldn't make, i.e. the first date back there, yeah. this other guy, I can't remember his name now, would fill in. Damn. Good drummer. He's just... He's, just, he's, like, he's not, not like, Travis. It's not like watching Travis, but he, he would just do Travis's stuff. Yeah. Travis made most of the dates, though. Just That's a good. couple that were missed, and they had this other guy travelling with Tom and Mark. Uh, Travis does fly again now, though. That's he's he's at therapy and stuff, I believe. They released, oh, they split split with Interscope, who were their record company at the time, and released a self-titled, uh, not self-titled, sorry, uh, a self-released EP called Dogs Eating Dogs. Very good, six tracks, five tracks, five tracks. Really good little EP, some good songs on there. There's a song called Pretty Little Girl on there, really good. There was some conflict stuff. Tom wanted, Tom started a thing called To The Stars, which we'll talk about in a bit. And he also wanted to do a movie and stuff, another movie with Angels and Airwaves. And... They kept delaying the start of uh, a new album. Yeah. So, I think they spoke to Tom about it. <laughs> Mark and Travis brought in Matt Skiba. Do you know who he is? Name's familiar. He's the guitarist and singer of the Alkaline Trio. Okay. Um, Mark had wanted to work with him for a while. Yeah. And when they decided to continue Blink with someone else, there was apparently no argument who it was going to be. It was yeah. always going to be Matt Skiba. So I think Matt actually originally just filled in for a handful of shows. Yeah. Uh, and then they decided, okay, this can work. And they released California. So that California album, which is brilliant. Yeah. It's one of my favourite Blink albums, which is saying something because it doesn't have Tom DeLonge. Yeah, like that's there's a, there's a couple of amazing tracks. There's this track which is out of her mind on it. And it's, it's a great What was song. the general reception to that? Album? Really positive. Um, people were sceptical, as you can imagine. No Tom DeLonge in Blink yeah. 182. But it... It was a really good album, and people generally loved it. Also, they wrote a song, which I featured in that quiz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to see some naked dudes, that's why I built this pool. <laughs> if I remember rightly, this is the album that knocked Drake off of the number one spot in the US after he'd been up there for, like, fucking 13, 14, 15 weeks. Good. Yeah. <laughs> good. Uh, so they had a number one album for the first time since their self-titled album in 2003. Wow. Uh, they released nine in 2019, which is their ninth studio album. Makes sense. That's still with Maskeba. I don't love that album. It's okay. It's, okay. it's one of my least favourite Blink albums. 2020, they released just a single. And this was actually just Travis and Mark. Mark played the guitar on it. Oh, wow. Uh, called Quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> About how much quarantine sucks. Yeah. In 2021, Hoppus announced that he had cancer. Ah. And this prompted... I meet up with Parker and DeLong yeah. as the trio again. He announced he was cancer-free, which was lovely. His hair, obviously, with chemo went, and it came back grey, which yeah. was really funny. <laughs> so he had these, like... He apparently, he's like, my hair's thick again, but it's grey. <laughs> um, but it did start to go dark again. You can yeah. see it on the thing. It's, like, grey at the top, but dark at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's growing out the grey now. He declared he was cancer-free. They told everyone they were uh, going to reform, and a week later, they dropped a single. They'd already recorded it, called Edging, which does get played at Coachella. Yes, it does. Uh, Skiba, <laughs> yeah. Skiba uh, wished the band well, back in their original, or the 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 main trio. Yeah. Thanked fans for accepting him in his time in Blink-182, said he enjoyed it, and wished the boys well. 
Nine years since their last gig as a trio. Mark, Tom and Travis opened Coachella 2023. I was going to say before we get started on this, that it just sounds so wholesome. Like even though like they split up for moments and Travis and like the plane crash, I think it all ends in such a wholesome way. They always come back to being pals. Yeah. Yeah. I think especially Mark and Tom who have known each other since 1992. Yeah. Since they were teenagers, they're very. They, they, they've got a bit of a pull towards each other for being just idiots. Yeah. They, I feel like they let themselves be themselves more with each other than they yeah. do with anyone else. And I think that bond's always going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's nice, because even like the split of, like the original split with Tom the Lodge, like it wasn't like any like, oh, I hate you guys, love both I just want to spend more time There was never family. a publicly a bad word said about each other. Yeah. No. In fact, Tom was often asked about the, the possibility of a reunion and he never said no. He was always like, yeah, probably in the future. Yeah. Yeah, even when they weren't talking. So I think it's just like time, just timing and like personal Yeah, life. I mean, when you've been touring with each other for, you know, kind of 10, 11 years, there is a bit of burnout, I think. Yeah. Um, they, they were pretty non-stop for most of the time. They were active first time around. I mean, like, God, considering how popular they were, I'm not surprised. Yeah. So, first gig together in nine years is this trio. Yes. Coachella 2023. Opening the festival. It's a big spot. Um, especially in something like Coachella. Yeah. You saw, I don't know how many people were there. It looked like... I mean, I went to see Red Hot Chili Peppers at Hyde Park and that was 80,000 people. Yeah. This looked a similar amount. Yeah. This was a lot of people. It was really nice to see them bro out before the festival a bit. Yeah. Mark and Tom especially together. I would say, it's, there's a funny visual of like men in their 40s dressing like they're in their 20s. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you notice um, Tom's t-shirt? It said, to the stars. Yes. So Tom, fucking... He's into aliens, right? <laughs> he, um, is that why there's a song called Aliens Exist? It is why there's a song called Aliens Exist. He started a company uh, that was about entertainment. He was um, to documentaries and films and stuff about aliens. And then a guy from the CIA who wanted to do more serious stuff with it, former CIA guy, wanted to work with DeLong uh, on the docuseries. And then they kind of divided themselves into two divisions. The entertainment side of it, which included making documentaries, yeah. and then the actual research side of it, uh, the science division, I think it's called. And it's mostly ex-government employees who were involved in it. Wow. Uh, they published official videos from the Army and Navy that weren't yet declassified online. I feel like uh, I've heard about this. Yes, and the Navy actually were like, yeah, okay, they, they were real, they were ours. Uh, we've recorded those on a flight test. Um, and actually, because of them pushing it, a lot of the stuff got declassified earlier than it would have normally been. That's amazing. Yeah, so Tom's... Tom's massively, massively into aliens. <laughs> so was, my favorite thing is when I brought out backstage, Travis just runs in. Like, obviously they were opening, but I suppose he just probably just ran in from another set. Yeah. He's fucking, <laughs> featuring Travis Barker was actually the name of a lot of songs. Yeah. <laughs> like, in the last, like, ten years. He's on everything. So the set starts with Ric Flair's theme song. Yeah. <laughs> obviously has an association with Space. Um, 2001 Space Odyssey. Uh, yeah. Tom loves space. That's probably why they started it that way. Yeah, and it's just such a pure jo- a eruption of joy from the fans. Yeah, so Coachella isn't a rock festival. No. It's a modern music festival, a lot of hip-hop, a lot of dance music, and to hear what it would mostly be casual fans at best just erupt for them walking on the stage. Oh, man, I actually got, like, goosebumps. It, no, it's amazing. They start with... An all note mashup thing, you know, like end and start songs with it live. Yeah. Everyone's just like Travis going mental on the drums, both the guitar and bass just going yeah. on one note. And they start with uh, one of the most beautifully written songs of all time. <laughs> this <laughs> family reunion. What did you think of family reunion, Tim? <laughs> this is record. This is on like other albums. This has been recorded before. I loved it. It it it. It was just a perfect way to go, yeah, we're back. Do you, have you got the, the lyrics written down? I don't have the lyrics, I was too busy laughing. So, the, the lyrics is the same, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's either 11 or 12, depending on whether motherfucker is a one word or two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on repeat. And I, I, I don't, I've got them written down, but I don't know why I've got them written down, I know it. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I went to Slam Dunk Festival this weekend. And there was a guy stood right in front of me during the bowling for Superset that had this on the back of his t-shirt. In written in full. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt. 
cocksucker, motherfucker, tits, fart, turd, and twat, as the Americans would say. <laughs> and they say that, I don't even know how many times they say it, eight, ten, yeah, twelve, say, just on, on, on loop. Repeat, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that song's called Family Reunion, which is also a great title for a song like that. And we used our one per episode. Yes, we did. <laughs> uh, start as you mean to go on. Uh, you know, pure old. Actually, that's not the whole song because there is the last line is different. All oh, right. The last line it goes, "Tits fart turd and twat." I fucked your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Which is there you go. They're back. Blink one eighty two. They're back. Are here. Yeah. They start with the anthem part two. First track off. Hey, I just heard this song. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna hear that a lot, by the way. This is the long. Giving it, his voice Tom DeLonge one hundred percent. His voice is so deep. Yeah, but he's still doing that that whine. Yeah, and he's done. He, he's putting on the voice, but it's great. Yeah, he knows what the people want to hear. Um, but Travis mo- looks so ageless. Yeah, he's just shaved all his hair off. He's, he's had a mohawk. He's had dreadlocks. Yeah. But at the minute, he's just a beanie and being shirtless. Somehow makes yeah. him look youthful. You know who he's married to now, don't you? No, he's married. Courtney Kardashian. Oh god, is it Courtney? He's one of them. Yeah, probably, probably. <laughs> you know there was that phase where like Megan Fox and the Kardashians and whoever else, who was it was dating? Oh, um, Kim Kardashian. Yeah, they had just gotten themselves punk guys covered in tattoos. <laughs> so they, uh, one of them was going out with Travis. One was going out with Pete, Pete Davidson, and the other one was going out with MGK. Yeah, yeah uh, Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah, I mean <laughs> MGK and Travis are collaborators and. MGK and Pete Davidson are best friends. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a weird triangle. Uh, Mark, fucking skipping around the stage like he's 25. I know. Oh, man, he's got so much energy at this point. But as someone who... We've worked like live atmospheres before. Mm-hmm. Heard a lot of crunching on the sound in the in the song. There's like this crunching sound effects on the mic. I didn't spot that, actually. I spotted it immediately. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Uh, they did sort it out, though, didn't they? It didn't go on for the whole thing. No, no, no. They have a habit of changing lyrics yeah. live, normally to swear words. They do goes, everything has fallen. And then he's just, fuck you. <laughs> just like, That's not on the song. Always changes it. Always adds swear words. My favourite um, thing is when the song ends, Tom goes, you can't do what we do. That's what a lot of people have tried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's been, there's often imitated, never, uh, never Replicate, bettered. Replicated. Yeah. Tom is so into this as well, which is so funny. I know. They're much more raw live. They don't rely on any crutches too much in terms of... They just fucking go for it. Yeah. Look, Travis will count them in. And if he's going fucking twice the speed of the regular recording, they go. They yeah. just go. But um, they catch up. Tom used to play drunk a lot as well, and often that would be lead to very sloppy play. But not so much this time. <laughs> um, I've actually got a note on here for most of these, between songs, because they chat shit between oh, yeah. every fucking song. One of the things they say is, so many UTIs are about to happen this weekend. <laughs> Tom goes, you fucking perverts. How many of you are going to come in tents? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Next they play Rock Show. Again, you just heard. Hey, I just heard the song, part two. <laughs> Travis's arm's going fucking mental. I know. What always amazes me about Mark, he sounds like he does on the record yeah. all the time. I was going to say, like, Mark sounds the same. Yeah, Tom, Tom... Tom dials up the Tom DeLong. Yeah. He dials up his own accent. There's a fucking mosh pit at Coachella. Oh, yeah, man. They're, obviously, that's not the usual kind of thing for Coachella. It, it was a tiny mosh pit, but there was a mosh pit. Tom doing his little strutting around. Yeah. This uh, got me excited for download. Yeah. I, you see, you texted me that today. Yeah. yeah this, uh, this set got me excited for download. I was like, too, yeah, too fucking right it did. Yeah. <laughs> Between songs again. <laughs> so, again, <There's> Tom. <laughs> time of recording. Oh, yeah, as if because everyone forgot that he used to be in the band. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's a bit where um, Tom goes. <laughs> so, in the news about two weeks before this, there was a thing about the Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama. Was, like getting yeah. boys to suck his tongue. Yeah. And Tom goes, Oh, man, I don't know if you guys have seen it. I went over to the Dalai Lama, Lama kissing yeah. booth. <laughs> Fucking gnarly. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> They're topical, too. My my favorite thing is as Man Overboard starts the next song, the second like little sponsored by Fast X yeah. in the corner. <laughs> I don't know why that popped me the most. Oh, that's funny. That's why. Um, so Man Overboard, the first non Take Me Pants and Jacket song we've had. Yes. Uh, it wasn't even on. Um, it was it really? I don't think it was ever released on any proper albums. Oh, okay. It was released on the Greatest Hits. That reminds me of Eminem doing that with, that with Fac and When I'm Gone for Cut and Call. Yes. Yeah. Same thing. So this leads me to ask, are there any songs that they're performing that Tom wasn't there for? 
not on this set, but an interesting fact for you. There's a song called Cynical, which is on California, mostly sung by uh, Matt Skiba. They've started doing it in the current tour. Okay. They didn't play it at this set, though. Yeah. So all this set is original songs and stuff. What you, you would do for the first one back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, currently, yeah, apparently they are. I really hope. So I'm seeing them in October. Oh, nice. And I really hope that they play She's Out of Her Mind. <laughs> Where are they playing? At the O2. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I've seen them at Wembley Arena before. Uh, nice. I saw them at Wembley Arena before the first breakup. I've seen them... I don't remember Wembley Arena a couple of times. And I've seen them at the O2... Twice as I was, well. I was actually at Wembley Arena on Friday for the Heavy Music Awards. Oh, I saw you posted some videos about yeah. that, and I saw McFly were there. Yeah, we, we were fucking like shocked. Hey man, at this point, I'm surprised I'm not buddies with McFly <laughs> because if you go to any pop punk gig, two of them are normally there together. <laughs> it's normally Dougie and Tom. Yeah, Fletcher. Uh, but like, I'll joke. I see a band like Sugar Cult. I don't think they're together anymore. But I've seen Sugar Cult about six, seven times. And I just look, you know, you're at like Brixton or you're at back in the day, the Astoria before it got knocked down. And you look to the right and there's just like half of McFly, like six people away from you just watching the show. Fair. <laughs> no, it was, it was a fun night. Um, Ed Gamble was there for some reason. He was one of the presenters. He loves metal. Yeah. Ed Gamble's a massive metal head. Have you ever listened to um, their podcast off menu? Fucking great no. podcast. Him and James Acaster. But yeah. They, he loves metal. He's oh, a big fair. metal guy. No, I, I just can't imagine him as a metalhead. No, he's he loves it. Well, he's uh, when well, he's been on Mock the Week, they've said that to him before. That so you don't look like a metalhead, and he's like, no, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Massive metalhead, loves it. Man overboard. Uh, it's about Scott Rayner, the original drummer. Oh wow! It's about his problems and stuff, and why you know why he left. Apparently, yeah. he's a policeman now. I think. Fair enough. <laughs> Tom Dartson always pops me. Um, <laughs> What's the good thing is during that Mark starts using Tom's mic. <laughs> yeah, just move it over. It's like this is like sound checks for Tom's higher pitch. Yeah, Mark's, oh, fuck it, I'll go sit over here. A uh, video about this is probably a little outdated. They have little people dressed up as them, and <laughs> they 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 they're not in the video at all. Blink, and they're playing the music. And then they also recreate all of Blink's famous videos. So, what's my age again? From Enron State, the video is them running around a town naked. So you've got the, these little people running around naked. Again, so many WWE flashbacks. So I've said here, so wrestling. Like, yeah. it's so early noughties wrestling. That has not aged well. I've not watched that video in a long time. And I don't know if I want to. <laughs> so when the song has to go, they go, "Hi, Charles Walker." Like, "Hi, I'm Charles Walker." The man talks. <laughs> yeah, that's just after this one. There is one song. In this the last line of this song is so deep. If you know what it's about. And the line is, yeah, later, I'll see you around. And it's like, oh, 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 poor Scott. Well, not that poor, he, he bought it on himself, really. And when, after Travis talks, Mark says, he didn't do that for fucking Red, uh, Reading Festival over yeah. in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Which they've not done since like 2003 or something, I don't know. And then just before they start the next song, Mark says, here's the music. Yeah. <laughs> it's the dork. This uh, track, Feeling This, first. It's the first track on the self-titled album. It was the first single as well. Fucking great song. I think the drum intro to this song is amazing. Yeah. So big. So the, the imagine that. You haven't had a Blink album in a couple of years. You've heard it's going to be... This is the first single as well before the album came out. They've put out there that it's going to be a bit different. And the first thing you hear when you put that CD in is the big drums and the guitar riff. And actually, I'd say this song as well as always, really good bridges between old and new stuff because it's still very punky. Yeah. Uh, even with the slightly experimental side of it. Really interesting way they wrote this song. The, the the lyrics, anyway. Mark and Tom went into separate rooms. Okay. Not telling each other what they were going to write about. And both of them wrote about sex. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So, but the, the different aspects of sex. So the chorus is about like passion. Yeah. And the verses are about kind of love. Yeah. But still sex. This is where the first uh, Travis's cowbell gets used. Just put more cowbell, please. Yeah. Uh, the video is quite cool as well. Uh, they're in like a military school, yeah. and Blink like pay, playing on the roof, and there's, there's these like boys getting their heads shaved because okay. they're in military school, and then they're, they're on the roof they're all in their uniforms, just like freaking out and like to Blink. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> Coachella singing along. Oh, I know the goosebumps. The goosebumps. Travis going fucking hard. This I, is a big drum track. Yeah. So. Uh, between songs again. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you note down what they said here? I want to say something about myself. Herpes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you notice the other bit they said? What was the other bit? I like to eat it from the back. Otherwise, the ball- fucking balls <laughs> get, get in the, the way. way. <laughs> <laughs> I always assume that, like, I always assume when Mark and Tom do this shit, they're just talking about each other. There's like, there's, there's a homoerotic tension between those two boys. No, oh, yeah. I mean, they've got to have made out at least once, right? <laughs> Probably drunk on tour. <laughs> yeah. Then Tom says, "That's Mark says that." And then Tom says, "What are balls even for? They don't taste good." <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so juvenile, but I love fucking it. Fucking idiots. <laughs> and this is where Tom also goes. There's a lot of shit we say that we should have been cancelled for. We say, "Fuck you, cancellation." <laughs> Oh, they just just idiots, but they're having fun. And then Mark says, "It's pretty easy. How about you just don't be a dick?" And then Tom says, "Yeah, you are what you eat." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these fucking idiots. Generally, I my friend, I wasn't aware that this set was going to be put on YouTube by Coachella. Yeah. And my friend, I knew they were playing it, but I didn't think we'd get a full, clean, lovely recorded set. And my friend Matt messaged it to me. I'm going to have to dub this in here, but my friend Matt was on a podcast recently uh, debating Blink-182 versus Green Day. Him on the side of Blink-182. <laughs> so I'll... Um, you're going to hear an edit here. I'm actually going to leave all me drabbling on in and I'm going to put it in now. The podcast is called The Listening Room, hosted by James Watts, who I know a little bit. Really great guy. Go check out the podcast. You can find it on Podbean. The episode featuring my friend uh, Matt Jefferson Crump is Green Day versus Blink-182. Matt is arguing on the side of Blink-182's Take Off Your Pants and Jacket, which we are reviewing on this episode. And they are comparing it to Green Day's Nimrod. So go check that out on Podbean, The Listening Room. So that was the podcast Matt was on. (laughs) (laughs) Good points. Yes, very good points. Well made, Matthew. We appreciate you. Yeah, just so juvenile. We go on to Reckless Abandon. Hey, I just heard this on part three. (laughs) So like I said earlier, this wasn't big on their sets for a long time. It's not a single. Yeah. Man, it's just hearing it live is so cool because there isn't a lot of recordings of it live. Whereas all the small things and rock show and that is a yeah. million for this it is great. <laughs> Another change lyric. Instead of use this song to lead you on, use this song to fuck your mum. It's great. <laughs> Mark doing his little punk jumps around. I like um, the production of this. The screen has the lyrics. Yes. Which is really cool. I will say that at this point, I was wanting to see more crowd shots. Like, I understand like when you're watching the feed of like yeah. a band, you see the band, but at the same time, I'd like to see the whole crowd get involved. I've, I've got a couple of problems with the production of this. Not from Blink side, from the recording side. Yeah. They don't linger on the crowd long enough when the crowd are singing. Yeah. They also fucking cut away from Travis seconds before he's about to do the coolest bit of the song. I... He's just like doing a regular drum beat. Yeah. Then they'll cut away from him, and then he's like, and you're like, he's just done the cool thing, man. I feel like the people recording and managing like the cameras weren't Blink fans. No, they didn't know what they were doing. That remind it really reminded me of another Simpsons one. Here we go. You remember when the mafia are fighting the yakuza, and Homer's like, "I want to stay." <laughs> that little one hasn't done anything. He's going to do something really cool, and then they drag him away, and then you hear the screams. Is that? <laughs> That is literally what's happening with this camera crew. It literally is. I know it's still like VIPs on the stage. Yeah, so you can see one of them. I know who he is. One of them is Mark's wife, Sky. Okay, so just like friends and family of the Yeah, band. I think so. There's a, you see a blonde lady in the far yeah. That's Mark's wife. Been What's... married since they were in their early twenties, isn't Aww. it? Lovely. I say um, Tom has so many guitar picks on his um, mic yeah, stand. Yeah, he throws them at the crowd. That's why. So does Mark. Travis does a like a halftime beat here that isn't in the original recording. And I fucking loved it. Just change up the beat. I just wish he was right, like, he's giving him a second to breathe. Yeah. Because the man, like... He goes a million miles an hour. I know. Another change lyric. Uh, instead of fucked a chick in a parking lot, is Mark says fucked me in a parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Standard. Between uh, between songs again. Uh, Mark does something quite nice, which is just pretty standard at Rock Gigs now. It's like, have a good time this weekend, watch out for your friends, don't leave any friends behind. And then Tom says, which is, you know, at Punk Gigs now, they're like, oh, if you're in the pit, Still look out for each other, you know, yeah. have a good time, but look out for each other. And then Tom says, we want everyone to go home safe and pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking hell, you can't, they just can't, can they? Just no. not, not take it seriously. There seems to be, you know, just like, not even one second without a joke. 
the next song Tom claims is very hard to play when they start. I know, he hyped up that riff so <laughs> expertly. A song's called Dysentery Gary. It's a great name for a song. It is. About, this is from anywhere of the state as well, and it's about the guy the girl left you for. I was going to say, in this song, Tom sounds very like Jericho. Or Chris Jericho. From yeah. When he's doing I, Judas. I could not stop hearing Jericho after that point. Really? Yeah. I don't think they sound like at all. It's that it's the like kind of like high pitch. It doesn't know, help. That, it doesn't help that I only know one song by Fozzie and that's Judas. Oh uh, no, we just like him singing other songs. Yeah. yeah, it was. I just couldn't stop hearing Jericho after that point. <laughs> this isn't very common on set lists either. It's another album track. Yeah, I love when Tom says, "Watch my hips, just do this shit," and he kind of swivels left to the right. right. And, yeah. like, <laughs> and he says, th- "He says you're welcome." <laughs> I just what I know is how is Mark not, just not dining that long sleeve? I don't know he's Californian, isn't he? He's probably freezing. For him, he's probably cold. <laughs> he's born and bred in California. Oh, fair. They're all from San Diego. Uh, fucking used to the heat. The Lion Girls are such a drag. It makes it sound like a neckbeard album. Yeah. Like, if you weren't for the fact that it was like the rest of the song gives it context about a guy, a girl leaving you for another guy, like neckbeards might, might take that and uh, use it as their battle cry. <laughs> <laughs> right here. It's about a girl leaving you for someone else called Gary with dysentery. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> that's kind of all the ones. Uh, I was going to say at the end of it, Tom grades himself. I gave myself a C. Gives himself a C. There's a line in here, which I'd said, after all their changes, you might think isn't a real one, where he says, fuck you all, your mum's a whore. That's from that's from the song. That's not a... Uh, <laughs> they didn't make that up. No, that's not an addition. There's a bit where Tom also says, I like kissing them girls. I like boobies. He's such a fucking child. <laughs> And again, the, the crowd is into it. Oh, they fucking love it. Even this song, which I would say, the casuals, which I'm going to, I know I'm generalising here, but most of them are going to be casuals. Yeah. Probably won't know this song. or well, not very well, at least. No. They will know the next song, though. What's My Age Again? I was going to say, because the eruption from the crowd when it starts. That little riff they did. Yeah. It? This was played at my wedding. <laughs> it was the last song they played. Uh, from Enema of the State, really famous music video. They're running through the streets, like I said, naked. Oh, yeah. There's a bit the, where like a girl holds. Then they showed a video on, of it on the Shrun. They used to show like mm. images of it. I think they show stills from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they're running around a small town naked, and there's like a bit where a little girl is like looking at ants on the floor with a magnifying glass, and <laughs> so she looks up and sees them. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking really funny video. It's the one that also features the nurse from the front of the album cover oh, for okay. Animal State. So that nurse is an adult actress. Ah. She's featured as the artwork for the cover with like a rubber glove that she's pulling yeah, on yeah. tight. <laughs> Uh, and they're actually they're actually on the artwork, artwork, but on the back, and they're in a queue in their underwear. Oh no! <laughs> but yeah, so she's she features in this video, and they go to pass her naked. They all turn around and follow, follow her. <laughs> this uh, there's a line: there's, "This state looks down on sodomy," and then Mark says, "Is it Mark says sodom you?" Which is uh, just another, another little addition. When I turned twenty three, which was a long time ago, ten years ago, I actually called. Uh, this is back when we used to do this kind of thing to get people to come to me. We used to do Facebook events. And oh, people God, actually yeah. used to look at them. <laughs> they don't anymore. <laughs> no. And I actually called it Nobody Likes You When You're 23 <laughs> after this song. Travis smashes another half time here that isn't on the record. So good. No, I just. Like I can say, like, there were people moshing to this song. It didn't really feel like moshing. No, it's a lot like it. It's a very pop, pop, punky song. Yeah. Very I'm not going to judge. Any excuse to mosh, you know? Yeah, they go for it, don't they? There's only one line I've got here for the between songs, and it's just Tom was going, and I was thinking, and you don't want that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we don't want you thinking, Tom. Edging. This song was the one they released with a week after a week saying they were going to get back together. Really fucking good song. It is. Quite heavy as well. I like, think it has a different vibe to all the other songs. It's probably because it's their most recent one. Yeah, massively recent. It's about the breakup, mostly, I think, of the band. Yeah. It says, oh no, we left the broken hearted. Oh no, look at the mess we've started. Which is about the fans, obviously. I said here, it's about the breakup of the band and also fucking someone in church, because they do say that. Yeah. <laughs> And there's even a bit of the circus about like getting a, get the rope, which is about them like people who were like wanted to lynch Tom for leaving the first time Jesus around. Jesus Christ! Like, Fuck me, man. Sounds like sometimes just so yeah. Weird. Uh, I like this bit where <laughs> after the song, Tom's like confused about what guitar he's meant to be using. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, wait, is it that one? Do I need to change? And the guy's like, here you go. Yeah. It's like, who are you? <laughs> who are you? What are you doing with my guitars? <laughs> Anyone know this guy? And then. Tom says to Mark, are you properly hydrated? And Mark says, I'm properly hydrated yeah, because your mum's Mark's so wet. wet. It's like, I'm talking about his mum's <laughs> vagina. It's so lubricated <laughs> that it hydrates me. Oh, they're so funny. 
Uh, next we go on to Dumpweed. Great song from Enemy of the State again. I was going to say though, I got, I got distracted for a split second because the feed was constantly reminding me that yeah, you're still watching Blink-182. It's like, thank you. Thanks, yeah. This is Blink-182, yes. <laughs> but they haven't left. Yeah, that, that guy up there making the dick jokes, he, yeah, he's in Blink-182. <laughs> I said here, this is almost the most unintelligible Tom is this whole set. Yeah. He goes so into that accent of his. And if you didn't, I think if you didn't know the words, you might miss a lot of it. I think I did, actually. <laughs> There's a line in it that really hasn't aged very well, which is, I need a girl that I can train. I was going to push past what, that. <laughs> what he's doing is, he's, he's um, yeah, it's, it's, it's aged very badly. I Yeah. I don't think they would have written this now. No. But it's such a love song that I think it's just going to keep keep out there. Yeah, and, but I mean, also Blink, it's not really a band that takes themselves seriously. No, and also, it goes the other way as well, though, because in it, he does say, his dad says he doesn't have a chance. Yeah. He says, come on, son, now you don't have a chance. Which is like, it's like both ends of the spectrum. Like, he's so useless with women. Yeah. That he would need someone he could train. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, don't get, that's not an excuse. It's still a horrible line. But, yeah, it's, 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 it's aged badly. This is the bit between songs where he goes, the guy comes out with another guitar, and he goes, give me a guitar. Yeah. Stop taking my guitar. <laughs> is that the pyro made me bronze? <laughs> yeah. This is where... Uh, this is Aliens Exist. Old one. <laughs> That's the song starts. Old one. Yeah, really old one. And obviously, Tom loves Aliens. But before it starts, Tom goes, I want to talk about the Dalai Lama some more. <laughs> yeah, he just goes back to that joke. And he does it again, actually, later, for um, when he goes to Don't Leave Me. Uh, Aliens Exist. Tom is obsessed with Aliens. As I said, he runs the To The Stars Academy. In fact, uh, there's a line in it there, we all know conspiracies are dumb. And then he says, no, they're not, which yeah. is actually not in the song, the no, they're not, but obviously he's into conspiracies. Yeah, but exactly. only, only ones about aliens, not about vaccines or, <laughs> or good, good. hostile takeovers of the you, you United know, the, States. The fun conspiracies. <laughs> yeah, aliens and uh, cryptids, not... Yeah, he's not an idiot. <laughs> what I thought about this one was, why is he singing so normally, Tom has? Why is he singing so normally after singing so Tom the Long in the last one? Maybe just wore his vocal cords. Yeah, maybe. Bit. I love the little uh, animation on the big screen of the aliens yeah. attacking. I was going to say, this is when we go, Travis is a god. Is this where he's basically juggling the sticks? Yes. So he does a bit, and I, I, I don't even know if I can vocalise this for the podcast, but he throws up the right one in the air. As it spins, he grabs it and slams it down as he's releasing the left one yeah. into the air that spins. He catches it exactly the right end, smashes the yeah, other symbol. He's juggling the drumsticks while smashing the symbols at the same time. Man, this guy, he's, he's unreal. Like, He's, he's in his mid-40s, man. Yeah. And he can still go like that. Like I don't know where he gets the stamina from. <laughs> that lucky Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, I said it, Tom does love a fucking pick slide, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. I think like eight or so in the whole set, he pick slides. It always sounds cool, so... There's a there's a really um, standard uh, extra line that they've done since the, out, the song came out, like back in 99 where they go, um, I'm not like you guys. And then uh, either Tom says it or Mark says it, but they're like, I, I have, have sex, sex with guys. guys. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, Tom who goes, I smoked weed on that song. <laughs> no, someone's, um, is it Mark who goes, someone call the cops, I smell weed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but they're in California, which I'm pretty sure is legal. Yeah, it's legal though. <laughs> and then is it Tom who's like, you ever bathe with your dad? This guy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I just points at someone <laughs> in the crowd. Guy. <laughs> the guy's like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Oh, uh, they do a really Green Day thing here, which is doing um, the Ramones, the Hey Ho, Let's Go. Yeah, yeah. Green Day do it like every set. They do a short Hey Ho, Let's Go. Yeah. And I've never seen Blink do it until this set, but they do the Hey Ho, oh, oh, let's, let's go. go, and then drop it straight into first date. I know this song, part four. Yeah. The only thing I've got on about here is that I'm getting really pissed off with how often they're cutting away from Travis. Uh, yeah. From Travis. I know. So the one thing I noticed was there was auto tune on Tom's vocals. Yeah, and I've got no idea why. And he's grinning the entire time. Yeah. So I've got a feeling he's fucking with something. Yeah. Uh, it's the only song it happens on as well. Exactly. Really perplexed me when I first watched it. My friend John texted me and was like, is he using auto-tune on first date? And I was like, why would he after not using it? I, just, I think he does to fuck with someone. Yeah, well, it seems like he was doing a fucking like uh, Drake impression or something yeah. like that. Or one of those guys who uses loads of auto-tune. Maybe, maybe he was making fun of people at like Coachella who use auto-tune. Maybe. Well... You're going to think those mics are going to be set up to, to do it. Yeah. He's grinning when it's happening as well. I don't know what he's doing. I think he tells Sons to tell him the other tune. Yeah, maybe. But it, it, it doesn't ruin the song. It's just, it caught me off guard. That friend, though, 
my friend John, John Turnham, really good guy, happens to be uh, the drummer for the band Snish, who do our intro and outro song. Hey. How's your friend? Yeah, great song. How's your friend then? Which one, John? Yeah, how's yeah, John's, your friend? John's great. John's uh, just John's just a good guy. He loves Blink and he likes Jim Jeffrey, so that makes him a good dude. Yes. So if you want to check them out, that's Snish S N I S H on Spotify. They're no longer making any music, but go listen anyway. It's good stuff. Especially How Is Your Friend. How's your friend? How's your friend? What I like about this is uh, the casuals fucking love it. They're yeah. in with a, let's go, yeah. don't wait. Yeah. In fact, I think this is one of the few where Tom just stops singing and lets them sing for a second. And what I will say about this version of it, the, just the music of it, take away his tuned vocals, the music was really clean for them. Yeah. And as you've seen, they're really rough live, like purposely so, I think. They're just because they're skate punkers at heart. They kind of they just go for it. Yeah, they have fun. Yeah, but this was super clean for them. Oh yeah, really clean. Um, I, but I wonder if that's what it's like when because obviously it's going through the whole sound system for the mix, like yeah. to go out on a set. Because when I've watched like live sets before, like Slipknot, Avenged Sevenfold, whatever, the vocals sound very clean when it's, when it comes through the live stream. But when I see fan footage, it yeah. sounds very bad. Well. It will be that that because the fan footage is picking up what's coming out the speakers. Yeah, the f- sound on an official recording yeah, will be coming straight from the desk. Exactly, yeah. that's what it, that's what it is. That's why it sounds so clean for us. Yeah, yeah. But I don't mean it sounds clean. I mean they sound tight. Oh yeah, yeah. which is not always the case. <laughs> yeah. Between songs, Tom says to Mark, "Mark, you're doing so good," and he's like, "I'm doing great." <laughs> <laughs> just picking each other just up. Wholesome lads. Yeah. Uh, they play "Don't Leave Me" next, which is another not massively common one. That's a really good bass solo. It does. Mark, uh, Mark makes a point about talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I've written here, it's an Enema classic, which is a sentence only a Blink fan can say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that classic Enema. <laughs> yeah. There's a, one of my favourite Blink lines is in this song, which is, I said, don't let your future be destroyed by my past. She said, don't let my door hit your ass." Which, yeah. for those who don't know, saying your door hitting your ass is about telling you to leave. Yeah. <laughs> See, after this song, that's when they go back to the Dolly Lover joke. Yeah. Mark shouts bass solo. And then after he does the bass solo, he's like, that's so fucking good. <laughs> and another another classic one they do is, the last line in the song is, and I'll be fine. And then Mark always says, and you will be fine, you fucking asshole. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. Yeah, back to the Dalai Lama. Tom's like, I want to talk about my, talk about the Dalai no, Lama more. <laughs> and they're just like laughing at each other now. It's like, how long could they go? <laughs> this getting delirious. Then we move on to the I need the second song from the self titled album, Down. Yeah, fucking great song. Again, really I wrote this song. was just so different because it has such a soft like chorus. Yeah, the down, down, down. down. Well, I was gonna say the mic wasn't really picking up Mark when he was doing the down, down. down. Yeah, it was quite quiet. wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. My so first just up the game on him. <laughs> yeah, bring him up, bring him up. My first proper band did a cover of this. No, really. And the first time we played it in front of a crowd, the singer comes up to me. He's not a massive Blink fan. Um, I don't mind him. His brother's a bigger Blink fan than he is. He's, me and his brother have both got the tattoo. And he comes up to me and goes, yeah, I don't 100% know where the, the words come in and stop. And like, we're on stage. Yeah. So I had to fucking sing the song and he was following me. Jesus. Whilst playing guitar, I was playing guitar. And I hadn't practiced to do it. I was like, okay. fuck me. Reeve, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> also, Travis was just amazing on this. Yeah, this song is incredible. Like, there's a slow bit. It's like the the fade of the the music, and then the drums just go mental just for a second before it all comes back in. He somehow in this as well makes the snare drum make like three different sounds. I know. So he's obviously hitting it in the different ways with different parts of the stick and in a different area on the drum itself. But fuck me, like the sound is incredible. It's just it's just incredible. There's <laughs> no other words to describe him. Yeah, another changed one here. When he says, I'll try to fuck you if you let me, that's not the line. He's, the line is, I'll try to kiss you if you let me. <laughs> Change it again. They then play Happy Holidays, you bastard. Uh, hey, I just heard the song part five. I Hit- just rewrote my notes with what, what, what? <laughs> Love to chaos. Really hits the mark, this one as well. Yeah. All the joke songs they're going to play in full. I mean, they played Family Reunion, then they played this. Fucking great. This is where between the songs they say, hey, we've overrun. We've still got three more, so fuck it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tom says, I'm going to stick my fingers in your tent and see what I feel. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, great. So this one, I think you might know, I Miss You. This is this was a huge single. Uh, again, so I only know this because it's on one line, which is, where are you? Yeah. I said Little Emo Tim would have loved this one. 
<laughs> Big emo Tim loves this one. Uh, what I like is they put their I miss you on the screen is in the yeah. style of the Twilight Zone logo. Yeah, so I yeah. Really, I, really, I, really I noted cool. that too. I was like, that's so cool. This is by far, I'd say, the most emo track Blink do. Oh, yeah. And in fact, the video. Have you seen the video? No. They're in like a gothic mansion and Mark's playing like an upright bass. Damn. Um, they were wearing suits. I think Travis... Uh, Tom and Mark are wearing suits. Travis is wearing like braces. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a nice video. It looks really cool. Like they've got film flicker effects on it. It's a really nice video. The classic My Yed. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, the mic is still having issues with Mark's soft vocals in this. I think the sound text did a very good job overall. Yeah. But it's not perfect. No. And it is hard to be perfect, especially when someone's got layer vocals like, yeah. I'm soft here and I'm loud here. Exactly. And um, I feel like they didn't probably get much time to sound text. Sound check. No, festivals they fucking don't, man. Yeah. Just like I said, I was at Slam Dunk last weekend and they did not sound check properly. No. Bands didn't sound like themselves till about the third song into a set. Yeah. They're still they're still fiddling with it, three songs, four songs in normally. Yeah, exactly. They all look like they're really enjoying themselves during the end. Yeah. The end big breakdown they do. Like, just the, having fun. With just random piano at the end. So that's in the song. Yeah. yeah. Again, it's probably the same dude who does the extra guitar bits has probably got the keyboard yeah. next to him. And I would say, you would say it was pre-recorded, except they don't play the same thing at the same fucking speeds ever. Yeah. It just depends how fast they're going to fucking do it. If they had to, for something like piano, and they needed a pre-record to fit, the person who's going to lead and make it work is going to be Travis. Yeah. Which he could do, but I don't think they fucking bother. I just no. think they've got a dude at the side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well now we go on to all the small things. The song that was featured in the Alvin and the Chipmunks movie. <laughs> Not to brag. <laughs> Not to brag. <laughs> No, I know people love this song. It's massively fucking overplayed. And it, also, it was meant to be a joke. Really? It's a, it's a take up on um, boy bands. Really? Yeah. Listen to it. It's meant to be uh, like Backstreet Boys or something like that. And the video even shows it. They're dressed up like doing famous different pop music videos. In fact, really fun fact for you. Somehow, they took the piss out of One Direction like 15 years before they were even a thing. <laughs> So, they're all in like white suits and doing stuff like that, and then they're on a beach, like in chinos, and yeah, they're doing yeah. like the big arm movements with the song, and it's the same beach that like ten years later, One no. Direction went to, and they're literally filming from the same angle as well, so you can see the rock formation in the back. No. Oh my god, it's so funny. I don't know how you know. It's like the Simpsons did it. Yeah, <laughs> Link already did it. Like I know it's overplayed, but I still love it. Like it, I always have time for this song. Well, the the fans did as well. I'll say that the Coachella loves this one. That's it, because obviously I wasn't a Blink fan. So yeah. when this song comes on, I was like, "Oh yeah, I know the song. I'll listen to it." Yeah, I mean that's what the the Coachella fans were like as yeah. well. They were they were there waiting for. They were most of them were probably just waiting for this one. Oh why yeah. Why they save it from one till the end? Exactly. Um, couple of lyric changes here. Watching, waiting, commiserating becomes watching, waiting, masturbating. Waiting, yeah. <laughs> she left me roses by the stairs. Not surprises, let me know she cares. Yeah. And jobs, let me know she cares. Uh, I like the graffiti that comes up on the wall at this point. Like the yeah. like, animated graffiti. Nice little uh, design there. So we move on to the last song. Damn it! This is my favorite. one of my favourite songs of all time. It's really this, good. Uh, see this tattoo, Tim? There's the stave with the music notes? Yes. That is the intro to Damn It. Wow. That is the... really cool. Originally, I was... This was my second option. Well... I compared the two and thought which one would look better as a tattoo. I had this and I had feeling this lined up in front of me on a computer looking at them. I had feeling this is sheet music is boring. <laughs> like, <laughs> it doesn't look great. Whereas this is, uh, yeah, so this is Damn It by Blink tattooed on my arm in uh, musical notes. Fair. Also, if you remember at my wedding, uh, this is, the band had like 60 odd songs and you could pick your top 10. I put this as number one and they didn't fucking play it. And I complained to you afterwards, it's like, why give us a list? Yeah, and I put a song at number one that's yeah. on your list, yeah. and you do not play it. And in fact, we were shouting at them to play it, and they still didn't play it. I, I remember <laughs> this song is also it's actually a pre Travis song. Oh, yeah, only one they played in this. They do still drop a couple. There's one called Carousel, they often play. There's one called Eminem. Carousel was actually one of the first ones they wrote together ever, okay. and they still play it occasionally. Travis's version is better, though. Travis's version just Anything goes Anything with Travis is better. <laughs> Hearing the crowd, so Tom, no, Mark, sorry, steps away from the mic. There's a line where he goes, did you hear? He fucked her. Yeah. And Mark steps away for he fucked her and the crowd just shouts it. I know. And it's like, oh, actual goosebumps. I like what comes up on the screen here, which just says crappy punk vibes. <laughs> 
Travis starts windmilling on the symbol, yeah. like winding his arms so far back, then back down. They like, always, always, always live do Mark sings a different song in the middle section. Yeah. Remember what he did here? Remember what song he, he sung here? Oh, I, I know because they play it out at the end. Yes. It was No Scrub by yeah. TLC. Yes. And so like the Neil 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 starts and Mark's just like, I don't want no scrub. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on the tour at the minute, they started singing, uh, I'm the problem. He's Mark started singing, I'm the problem, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then they come with that big end back in for the double chorus yeah I guess this is growing up and as you said hit the last big note everyone like hitting all the big notes like the big drums then the DJ plays I don't want no scrub scrub. (laughs) it's like good work DJ I think it's Tom that immediately just like goes away and Mark's there with Travis and I feel like it's going Tom come back we need to pose (laughs) Well, so, and as Travis, uh, like I said, you saw the blonde lady at the side of the stage. Yeah. As Mark walks off, he's greeted by someone who gives him a quick hug. That's yeah. his wife. Yeah, that's, that's Sky. And Travis throws his sticks to the crowd. Yeah, Mark, well, the reason Mark stays is because uh, he wants to give his picks to the crowd. Uh-huh. Tom's already thrown them all out. Yeah. During the set, Tom, like, just goes, out, oh, fuck, have that yeah. one. <laughs> and he, whereas Mark's still got, like, six left. So Mark, like, oh, stops, Mark stops to give them out. Tom's already done all his. What do you think of the live set? Really fun. Yeah, right? Really fun. I think... Um... It's a great way to just see what Blink are like. Is you already get a sense of humour from listening to the album, but actually just seeing them interact with each other on stage is yeah, just a blast. And seeing how a crowd reacts to them, especially mm. a casual crowd. Oh man, it's so good, right? I would have. So I had this idea about when we do music, doing a live set instead of a thing. And when I thought about doing Blink, I was originally going to get you to watch either Supersonic Tour from Tokyo back in 2003 or Big Day Out from Sydney in 2000. But then they did this set, and this set kicked ass. I was yeah. like, no, we're doing the new set. we got to do the new also, set. Also, I feel like after everything that like you told me, like the history and thing, I think it's just a perfect way to go. They're yeah. still the same after all this time. They're still fucking dorks. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to know something else really cool about Coachella Festival? Sure thing. Frank Ocean, who was meant to headline a night, pulled yeah. out. Yes, he did. And Blink they up. called Blink. <laughs> They were like, you know what, you guys kick so much ass open in the festival. How about you headline a night as well? That was Weekend 2, right? Yeah, has anyone ever... In fact, when we were talking about this, you started watching Weekend 2, didn't you? I was like, no, 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 not that one. Not that one, Timothy. Were, you said, <laughs> look up Blink at Coachella. That was the first one I found, <laughs> and it did not specify what weekend. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Weekend 2, they closed the night as well. I think it was... It might have even been the last night. So if they headline... They, they could have bookended that festival. I can't remember if it was I the think it was one. the final night. So they bookended. They yeah. opened and closed that festival. The sets were only slightly different. I think they had three different songs. Fair enough. Um, I'm sure the jokes were completely fucking different. I mean, that's going to be exciting for Metallica because um, they're doing unique sets. So on the yeah. first day and the Saturday. Are they doing albums? No, just sets. So Okay. Yeah. Because, I mean, Metallica has like decades of music to go over, yeah. right? So before some St. Anger stuff on there. You know, Metallica fans, it's the best album. <laughs> <laughs> Even I know that that's hated, Tim. It's it's despised, but a sick part of me just wants one song from there. I um, I only went to one night of this, but a band called Less Than Jake, or a ska punk band, really yeah. cool band, they did, I think it's, was it about the Astoria? It might be in the Astoria. They did six nights on the trot at a London venue, playing a different album each night. Oh, that's cool. I also saw Jimmy World at the Kentish Town Forum. Nice. No support act. Yeah. They played Clarity, their first album, in full. Had a kind of 40 minute break, half yeah. hour break, come back and played all of Bleed American, their most popular album in full. Nice. And because of a miscommunication, I bought tickets and my friend bought tickets for each for a different night because they did two nights in a row. We just ended up going both nights. We thought, oh, we could sell one night. No, nah, fuck it. Yeah. We went both nights and it was fucking killer. I remember as well, Linkin Park, this was their final ever download and they did Hybrid Theory, the entire album. <sighs> That is the best album. I know some people are like, oh, me, you're at Hybrid Theory is the best album. I actually have a soft spot for A Thousand Suns. You're wrong, and that's okay. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's so good. It's so chaotic. Have Never you listened like... to much Jimmy Eat World? No. Oh, there's a future episode. <laughs> there's an episode! <laughs> I love Jimmy Eat World. Another band tattoo I've got. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, they Blink-182 
open and close the festival, and I, they were replaced Frank Ocean, and I presume they're ours because they kick so much ass. Yeah. Uh, we are expecting a new album and more singles by the end of the year. Nice. October, I think, is the, the loose date given. I am excited. Um, before we go on to ask what I'm doing next time, I'm just going to go on Travis Barker's Wikipedia. I go on his discography. <laughs> and we're going to find out how many featuring Travis Barker <laughs> songs there are. So, Travis Barker, as well as being featured on that many Blink records, yes. everything from Enter of the State to the end, he also, uh, Plus 44 record, did all of it, did all of Boxcar Racer. He also has his own, he's done one solo album. And I say solo because he wrote the music. And then he had a bunch of artists feature on it. Rappers, mostly. Rappers. But also um, members of Rancid and The Transplants. Corey Taylor was on it, too. Corey Taylor is Tech on one song, on yes. it. I know there's a really good song. That's like Buster Rhymes, Yellow Wolf. And I think... yeah, it's called Give the Drummer Song, that song, which is the name of the album. Yeah. And it's the one where Buster says, Blink, 182 times. times. Yeah. Do you see the twister with Travis Madness? It's, it's so, so good. It's so good. And oh, it's actually one of my, like, on repeats. So that is Travis's solo hip hop mostly yeah. album. Even the Rockier tracks have hip hop bits in them. Yeah. He's a huge hip hop fan. He's friends with so many hip hop artists as well. Also, the drummer for a band called The Transplants. Okay. Who is himself, Tim Armstrong from Rancid, uh, and a guy called Rob, someone I can't remember his surname, who was actually I think he was just a um, a tech and a roadie for their for Rancid, but he can fucking like go hard rapping not fast yeah. but intense nice. and they've done a couple of really great songs one called DJ DJ which my band, old band used to cover oh, okay. and there's a line that we used to have to cut out depending on the venue which uh. was fuck the motherfucking backstabbing cunts <laughs> <laughs> then uh, we got to bleep that one God, I haven't even got a bleep a save down I need to I need to because <laughs> I know he he worked with Lil Wayne on the Rebirth album I know he did MGK's Pop Punk albums he did he did did he work um, with Youngblood? Yeah, he's definitely worked with Youngblood before. I don't think he's worked with Eminem. He's worked with... Yes, he has. He has done. He? he did uh, the Grammys with Eminem. Oh. Uh, only live. Oh, only live. He I've... drummed for Eminem. I think it was at the Grammys. He's done a do- ton of stuff with a guy called Yellow Wolf. He did a song Yeah, with, Yellow Wolf's great. Uh, so they've got um, oh, Psycho Dura. White, oh, okay. they're called. Uh, they did one EP. Really good EP. Yeah. He did a song called I Think I'm Okay. With Young Blood and Machine Gun Kelly? Yeah, that was on Machine Gun Kelly's album. Three Years Sober with a guy called 93 Punks. It's Lil Wayne, Rick Ross. Yeah. He did a version of Misery Business by Paramore with Machine Gun it's, Kelly. It's terrible. <laughs> no, no, okay. Travis, great on it. MGK, terrible. And I can say this publicly now because obviously learning to sing. Learn to sing. So, you've heard the original Misery Business, right? Uh-huh. So, you know the bit in the chorus where Hayley goes, Whoa! And yeah. she, like, rises with it. We're never meant to break. Yeah, but she rises with yeah, that. Yeah. MGK doesn't do that. He goes, Whoa! He <laughs> keeps it, like, that I heard flat. It. Some of my friends are going to hate me for this. I don't really like the Machine Gun Kelly pop punk stuff. No, no one, f- like, no one likes it. I know, quite a few people do. It's got a weird following. So, other stuff Travis has done. He went on a little weird phase at one point of doing uh, covers, but not covers. He would take the original track and yeah. just do better drums. He did right. a version of Crank That, Soldier Boy. <laughs> Way better than the original. He did a version of Umbrella by Rihanna. He did 3AM by Eminem. I want to hear that. Yeah, it's all on um, Travis's YouTube channel. Oh, okay. I'm going to load that up after this. Yeah, he done loads. He also uh, featured on a song called 11 Minutes with Youngblood. James Arthur. The singer songwriter dude, a British dude, oh. Steve Oakey, Machine Gun Kelly, as you yeah. said. Like, there's so many here that I don't even recognise half of the acts. I was kind of skipping through some. Willow Smith done a track. Wow, with. this is the this is the list I'm looking for. Guest appearances by Travis Barker. He's on Provider by Nerd, Rock My Shit by The Black Eyed Peas, Unwind by Pink, My Heart Is a Fist by Papa Roach, You Know Who by Ti, three or four songs with Avril Lavigne. Paul Wall, the rapper, Buster Rhymes, Flo Rider, Mary J. Blige, Wale, Lil Wayne, Tech Nine. He did a song called Hard Liquor for Tech Nine. Yeah, that's great. Trey Songs, Britney Spears, Scroobius Pip. I fucking love Scroobius Pip. Wiz Khalifa, Yellow Wolf, as mentioned. Cypress Hill, he did a song with. Wow. Exhibit, LL Cool J, 
Skylar Grey, who is the chick from... I Need a Doctor. I Need a Doctor by Dr. Dre. Run the Jewels. Yep, it's a great one. Um, I think it's called All Due Respect. It is All Due Respect. I know my RTJ. Demi Lovato. <laughs> Escape the Fate. Yeah. Yeah, Willow. He's... He's on everything. Fucking P. Diddy. Newfound Glory. Transplants, as I mentioned. 